Hi, all. I'm Dan Smigbride, founder of the We Get Around Network Forum. Today is Thursday, March 31st, 2022, and you're watching WGAN-TV Live at 5. We have an awesome show for you today. Developing Matterport brand and shopping experiences powered by the Retail VR platform. And here to talk to us about that is Adrian Zanelli. Hey, Adrian, good to see you. Hey, Dan, good to see you. Adrian is the Retail VR co-founder, heads up international business development for Retail VR on the website retail-vr.com. I reached out to Adrian because Retail VR is doing super exciting things, mashing up Matterport with virtual reality, augmented reality, and way cool other stuff. And so I asked uh, Adrian, he was uh, gracious enough to agree to do some demos for today. We're going to cover five demos of a, a virtual showroom, a virtual e-commerce, retail staging, shopping studies, uh, and in-store activation, all kinds of great things that use Matterport and VR, AR, uh, mashed up with the retail VR platform. Um, Adrian, before we jump into getting these demos, how about some context, first of all, about uh, retail VR, the, the company? Right. Thank you very much. First of all, uh, thank you very much for having me on board. I do appreciate um, to we founded the company uh, uh, in 2018, um, two, two co-founders, uh, myself and Erwan, uh, my associate. Um, we are currently about 20. We are based in France, uh, in Nantes, uh, south, uh, west of France. And basically, uh, the idea with uh, retail VR is to say that um, the retail industry is going to be a top user of uh, re virtual reality and augmented reality uh, for the coming years. And this has been uh, drastically accelerated with the usage, uh, sorry, with the, the recent uh, COVID crisis and uh, re-emphasis uh, with the metaverse uh, that is coming to the, to the market. And so when we had the project with uh, Erwan uh, about uh, founding the company, uh, we had a, we thought that there was a major barrier in adopting this uh, 3D technology is the cost of uh, actually setting those uh, assets. And um, what we are trying to uh, and offering to our client is a SaaS solution that will actually uh, uh, cover the entire uh, retail value chain. Um, so we are um, reducing the cost of uh, 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 producing 3D assets um, and whether it's uh, content, uh, I will show you uh, how it works. Uh, we have patented a 2D to 3D converter uh, or whether it's the container. And this is where uh, the, the partnership with Matterport is very important because we use uh, Matterport Digital Twins has uh, containers uh, in which we are going to uh, uh, put our uh, uh, 3D assets uh, to do all these um, uh, sh showrooming experiences or e-commerce or, e or, or retail staging. So we are um, addressing um, uh, the merchandisers, the marketing people, the sales, uh, and of course, uh, we are also offering our clients uh, uh, an e-commerce, uh, a new way of uh, making e-commerce uh, that is more immersive and that has that will bring more emotions to the to the client. Awesome. Uh, you you mentioned uh, some tools uh, for retail VR, maybe, maybe if we look at your tools platform, even before we look at the examples, maybe that'll help uh, give us context for what we're about to see. Does that make sense? Yeah, um, definitely. Uh, I can uh, share my screen with you. Uh, so let me uh, show you the platform. Uh, this is basically how the platform works. So 
we have um, you basically connect login and password. I mean, this is a SaaS platform, and then you are going to have different uh, uh, files. So the first one are the showrooms, um, where basically you are going to store all the different showrooms you have. Uh, then we have the objects. So there we have the product. We have what we call smart objects and fixtures. Um, and we are also working with projects. Uh, we have some analytics and we can also use um, a way for organizing the way our clients are going to connect to the, the, the platform. Uh, if you have full rights or limited rights, depending on, on the, the access uh, you get granted. And um, it's important to stress that we are API uh, connected. So basically, we have all sorts of APIs that are that can be connected to the to the platform. Um, I have mentioned uh, briefly the two D to three D converter. Um, maybe I, I can show you the way it's processed. It's actually um, very simple to use. So I've made a a, a short video. Uh, I will comment the the video. Um, so now you recognize the platform. So it's a, it's, it's a basic uh, drag and drop feature. So basically you have uh, photos inside your computer. Uh, it can be six faces photos and you are going to uh, drag these photos into the platform. And you also have the measures, uh, measurement of these uh, pictures and you also are going to drag these. And then it's just a way, a question of sorting um, the, the measurement uh, and the photos and the machine will do the rest. And after uh, some uh, minutes, then you get a 3D object that it was actually created, generated from a single uh, face photograph. So this is very powerful because it really helps our client to, um, how to say, they are able to um, uh, create uh, uh, 3Ds, uh, objects on the fly, um, thanks to this uh, 2D to 3D converter. So um, what, I, what I think is amazing about what you were showing is when we actually jump in to the front end demo, and yeah. our, our viewers are going, well, wow, how did you get that, those, those, those bottles of uh, soda uh, yeah. or products, yeah. uh, whatever it might be, whether it's fashion or home or uh, food or packaged goods or whatever it might be, uh, you actually have this crazy, exciting tool to convert 2D objects into 3D objects. And once they're 3D objects, to be able to insert them into the Matterport tour and and so there's a lot of magic that's going on with retail vr which is why i was really excited about having you on the show how about we actually jump into maybe the the first demo uh with the uh, virtual showroom uh and i think now that we have a little bit of taste of how something was created now, now we'll see how you actually use it right okay um so i need to share the screen again up oh, one second Right, so <clears throat> I guess you recognize here so uh, uh, a Matterport environment, a digital twin. Now, the beauty of Matterport is actually the fact that uh, you can have someone to scan for you all around the world. And you're actually in a, in a store right now uh, that was uh, shot uh, in Singapore. Uh, during COVID, we had a lot of our clients that ask us to, to do a shooting. So this is really practical. Uh, you can, you know, pick up the phone, uh, find someone to, to do the scanning uh, somewhere in the world. So uh, now you're in this, the, the, the store. So uh, you can see here uh, we have these uh, 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 video screens that are around uh, the, the, the place. Um, and also you have um, the products, uh, for instance, here. So we offer those carousels of products. So I've, uh, I've uh, taken different products. Um, and you can also insert those 3D elements. So I will just show you this, for instance, this is a product sheet um, in which you have uh, the 3D product. 
that you can play with. Um, eventually, uh, you can pick up your mobile phone, and this is where uh, the 3D comes with the uh, augmented reality. So if you scan this QR code, uh, then you can uh, actually use uh, augmented reality to have the product uh, on your desk or on your on your on your table, or if it's a piece of furniture uh, in your living room, for instance. And you see, we have these. Uh, uh, product sheets that can uh, handle video content uh, as well as picture content and of course you have some text here and you can add these to the to the wish list so uh, oops here um, also uh, you can have another uh, set of environments same thing carousels here you have shortcuts there uh, to help you navigate into the store. So if you want to, for instance, uh, I don't know, uh, aim to the jewels, uh, here you are. And you can also uh, place 3D elements like this uh, and add this to your wish list. And the good thing is that from there, uh, you can uh, move to the wish list. I can read so on that purse or pocketbook, it's actually you could rotate that now uh, in order to see that product. Yeah, yeah, you can rotate this uh, and and get get it uh, back to to the to the wish list. I have this thing that I can't remove. Okay. Um, I wanted to <laughs> to show you how to uh, remove the wish list, but the the cross is behind the. The Zoom stuff, so I can't. Yeah, I, I know we got a lot going on with how we do WGA and TV live at five. I, I know when I, it, it's actually super simple to do what you're doing when you're not actually doing the show itself. Uh, so uh, we'll we'll just accept that you could change it and, and it's easy peasy. Right. Thank you very much. What I wanted to showcase is that basically uh, you can then place your order and exit the 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 the. the the, the platform. Um, so there's a lot going on. If we could just go back to that image for a second, to that Matterport tour uh, mashed up with retail VR. Yeah. Uh, the, okay. Uh, e even, even before this screen, if we go right back to the tour, is that possible? Yeah. So yeah. Uh, you called up uh, an individual product. It was either a purse or the perfume. Uh, right. And you added it to the shopping cart. Uh, is this is the shopping uh, is is that a Shopify shopping cart? Is that a mag? Right. Thank you for asking this the, the the question. This is very important. Uh, we are uh, uh, Shopify uh, compatible. So basically, we have an API that is connected to Shopify, which helps us to uh, uh, import the product very easily. Uh, and also, we are currently implementing uh, the same thing for uh, PrestaShop uh, and Magento. These are uh, two other uh, CMS uh, available from the from the from the market. Hey, I so, heard I heard Magento's company. I missed the second one. PrestaShop. PrestaShop. I don't know if. Uh, I'm I'm not familiar with that. Um, okay. If I, if I saw, saw it uh, spelled out, I might. Uh, recognize it, but um, there are different uh, CMSs available. Uh, you have PrestaShop, Shopify is probably the most famous one. You also have uh, WooCommerce. Um, really depends on 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 the the market where you. Uh, okay, so the, the the point there though is you're you're staying within the Matterport tour while you're doing your shopping. Um, presumably the pricing that we're seeing is actually could be dynamic pricing. You're not going back, uh, the, your client's not going back into a Matterport tour and changing every matter tag to reflect no. new pricing that changed today, no. tomorrow, next week, next month, next no. quarter, next no. year. It's all, all the pricing is being managed within the third-party platform using yeah. their API such as Shopify in order to accomplish that. Yeah, you're right. Uh, you're co completely right, Dan. Uh, this is uh, fully automatized, and and since we are connected to the API, we have the prices, uh, the uh, stock as well. 
so, so, so that's that, that that's what I'm trying to show here. So you know, if I happen to be a Matterport service provider, I mean, you know, if you were showing this to your retail client, they would look at that and they would get it. But I, I also want to just kind of highlight if you're a Matterport service provider, you shoot Matterport tours in your market, you're wondering if a retail store uh, is a potential client. This is an example to see that the Matterport service provider doesn't have to think about, oh, how am I going to update pricing every day, every week, every month, every quarter, every year? This is just too overwhelming for me to even think about talking to a retail store. But now that I understand that no, no, the Matterport tour uh, powered by the retail VR platform that is using APIs from a, uh, a shopping platform such as Shopify makes it super easy, super fast for the retailer to do what they're presently doing just tied into their existing shopping cart. And, and it, it's it's, it's not a lot of work for anyone because it's fitting into their existing workflow. So really in this example, if you're a Matterport service provider, all you need to do is shoot the space or better yet, show them the retail VR, you know, we're recording today's show, show them the, the, you know, what's possible and go, okay, if this works for you, you use Shopify, that's great. I can shoot the tour and we can do this retail, this integration with the retail VR platform. Yeah, that's completely correct. And uh, also, um, I can, <clears throat> uh, you know, I've just had it like a, a, so, some sort of video screen here. Uh, you see, it's very simple. And for instance, I'm going to add uh, here, and you see, this is uh, very, very simple. I can change the color. And then here, I'm connected to a, a, a Shopify mockup, and I can actually uh, access. Uh, all the products that are in the database uh, and I can make a selection, uh, you know, if I'm interested into, uh, let's say, uh, uh, these products, I, I take a uh, random product. Sample. It's just to show you how it works and how simple it is. I can uh, use different templates there, uh, up uh, and then, up, I go from editor mode to client mode, and there you can see up. If I press there, you you're going to have the carousel appearing, and all the content that is into uh, Shopify will appear uh, onto the screen. So if I don't have any content, uh, then you know it's me filling the Shopify uh, before um, how to say uh, reaching the 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 products. So, so it's it's so done stay, all in one. Yeah. So stay with me here for a second because I I, I think what we're seeing there, there's kinds of there's there's actually two concepts in one and I think one of these concepts we're going to show separately. So the the first concept is you take an existing store with existing product and you have a library of the products within the retail VR within the which is coming in through the API through Shopify and you're now saying okay I have every product that's in the store because it's actually within the e-commerce shopping platform. And now all I'm doing is adding hotspots to each of the products that I want to enable the uh, customer to purchase. And I can either do an individual product or I can give them a carousel of related products. Am I, am I doing that right? Yeah, this is completely, uh, yeah, you're, you are exactly, uh, uh, saying that what what what's going on, and it's the, and you can also add the three D assets. Uh, so the three D, so, so the three D assets, I think, is actually it is is really your your virtual e commerce demo, yeah. Three D assets can be added uh, into the store. Uh, there, I have added a, a bag, uh, which I can actually. Uh, 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 remove or or you see this is it's this bag I'm I'm removing it uh, and then I can place uh, uh, there I have a 3D element placed and I can uh, actually add a 3D object here uh, if it's a product then I'm going to uh, go to the product library so it's the um, I would say the same thing as if I was going to uh, to the the the, the Presta shop uh, it, the idea is to get uh, to go to the library and pick up the product that I want to uh, uh, 
put on the table on on this uh, table. So I've removed the green bag. I'm I'm going to put it back, uh, and there it goes. And then if you go, you move to the client mode, uh, and then you can have the, the 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 product that will appear here. And like we've done before, you can manipulate the product. And this product is is uh, is actually stored into the the platform. So what I think is super interesting about that is because I, I would say that there's probably every Matterport service provider that has ever created a Matterport tour has had a client say to them, oh, I forgot to include da-da-da in the space. Uh, is there any way you can Photoshop it in? And in the, in the past, what we would say is, uh, sorry, what you see is what you get. But now you're able to say, hey, good news is there's actually a way to add products to an existing Matterport tour using yeah. the retail VR platform. True. And, and I and think you're going you're to show some things on steroids. You're going to show us some really exciting integrations. But if you just wanted to add a, a, a couple products it's now possible to, to, to do that with a Matterport tour powered right. by the retail VR platform. Right. And for instance, you can imagine having a, a, a shelf with no products on it in which you are going to position the products. You can position a background and you can have uh, you know, a, a shelf that, uh, where you, you're going to showcase uh, promotions, for instance, or new product, new release product, and you can put uh, locate the, the 3D inside the store and, uh, and actually uh, uh, change the background and, and, and then uh, put the product sheet as, uh, as you would do uh, on a regular base or as you have seen on the, on the screen. Awesome. Adrian, I still have questions on this tour. Could we go back to the Matterport tour? Because I, I, I think we were just taking it as an assumption that when, when you displayed the, the, uh, the Matterport tour, that we were actually seeing video screens, video walls that were playing. And yeah. uh, as far as I know, I can't do that with my Matterport camera. So uh, there's some magic that's taking place uh, as a result of retail VR's platform. Maybe what you could do is uh, just at least point to us uh, in, in that tour. Uh, I, I know we got a lot of things going on on the, the demo front, so it may be hard to pull it back up and I'm probably maxing yeah. out every, everything. Uh, but I, 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 think the, I think the point is, had you, had you been able to go back to that tour, uh, yeah, what, what we would have seen uh, is video walls surrounding that store. And I could imagine retail VR platform enables adding a video screen anywhere in a three-dimensional space. Yes, that's correct. Um, let me try to share again with you. Okay. Um, while, whilst we were talking, I've tried to, uh, 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 to show how uh, we can integrate the screens. Um, can you see my screen now? Not, not yet. I, I, I took okay. this out of screen share, but if you, if you have it okay. all set up and queued up, why don't you take us back into the yeah. sharing? Um, also, when you show it to us, Maybe what you could also show is, uh, in, in fact, even that's interesting that we're presented the screen of language. So uh, you're not limited to hard coding the text in English or French, for example. This is actually the, the home page. So when you log into the, you, you can have like a video uh, showing in the first page, or you can have a picture. Uh, and then you're going to enter the store. And so I'm on the client side. So this is the, uh, the I'm, I, I quit the editor mode. Um, and there you can see all the screens I've added there on the top. Uh, there are different screens that I can add. Um, so you can uh, actually roll different videos. Uh, so whilst you, we were uh, exchanging, I've added this video right here, uh, which has... Uh, which is a, actually a chocolate video. So uh, that was to stress the difference, but um, you see, you can have all sorts of, uh, of videos there. You also have, um, we also have like a 3D uh, shapes. Uh, if you want to use uh, the 3Ds instead of using the, the, the usual uh, dots, 
and as far as the videos are concerned, like I said, uh, you, you also have the possibility to, to have uh, videos inside the, uh, the, the product sheet. So you have the pictures, of course, you have the description, uh, and you also have the, uh, the, the video inside the product sheet. And also we are connected to the uh, uh, social networks, uh, which means that if you want, you can uh, send these to the, to, the, to the social network. Is, is there a live guided tour uh, yes. part of uh, it? Experience? Yes, well, uh, th there's something I can show you. Um, uh, uh, is um, we've, we've worked on a, a, a personal shopper um, demo. Uh, basically, you you are on the uh, a website uh, where you are going to select handbags. So I'm going to select uh, these, for instance. And I can book, uh, I can book a, a, a private shopper, a personal shopper uh, that is going to connect into the showroom. Uh, so there it's not connected, but you can imagine, I don't know if you see the screen, checking permissions. Checking permissions, please right. so, have the use of the microphone and webcam, yes. Right. And I, I think we're using we're the using microphone for our, our, our show, and the webcam for our show. So I, I can imagine it's just a little bit too crazy to try and demo no. it on uh, what we're doing. <laughs> yeah. But this is to show you that there you would have um, the seller, uh, the, 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 the salesman of, the, of, of this boutique, um, I can make an appointment with him. And I don't know if you've noticed, but I selected three bags and these three bags uh, automatically appeared in the store. I'm so tingling. I'm selecting this, the bags here and yes. they appear yeah. into the store on those plots. Yeah, I'm tinkling. I don't know if that converts to French, but it's super exciting to see what you just did. It was like, oh, well, that was easy. I can't imagine how hard it was to do that. But it, from a, a user standpoint, well, of course you would display the, the three uh, uh, designer bags on pedestals uh, while my personal shopper appears to perhaps answer my questions about them. Yeah, and then, uh, yes, so, is that, so just for clarification, that's a real person. That That's not a little chat bot. There's no, you know, no, that's a real personal it's shopper. A, Can, that's yes. a feature of the platform. And if your client wants to have a real person, uh, yeah. then they, they can do that. And I, I could imagine... I'm not sure if it comes up with one of your other tours. We're still kind of on this virtual showroom, but I, I, I know that, uh, that uh, Retail VR has done a, a lot with, I want to say, uh, the annual uh, designer clothing lines out of Italy. And I could imagine that's a feature you'll be offering to your uh, designers for their virtual showroom for for buyers yes, to interact with buyers. Definitely, actually this feature uh, uh, has been, um, uh, we, have, we had two use cases for this. The first one, uh, it, you know, during the COVID crisis, uh, we have these uh, uh, fashion weeks uh, that are happening in, uh, in Europe. I'm sorry, and, you called them a... Sorry? What did fashion you call weeks. Them? Fashion, fashion weeks. weeks. Yeah, yeah the, the the fashion weeks. Uh, well, you have them in the U.S. as well, but it's uh, it's very important, and and it you get people to travel from all around the world, and they were stuck because no no one could fly anymore. So um, we've actually connected with uh, all sellers, uh, CRM all sellers, in order to recreate a way to visit uh, a, a, a digital showroom. And to actually uh, being able to interface uh, with uh, with the salesperson that would drag the, their client into the showroom, the Japanese client, the client from the U.S., show them uh, the, the the new collection during the, the so, exhibition. So, were you using that that live guided chat feature for those fashion weeks? Yes, at that the must time, have yes. blown your clients away. They just must have been like, "Oh my gosh, I can't believe you're doing what you're doing." 
Yeah, and there's another use case in which we've used it. So um, uh, it could be a transition uh, maybe to show you the, uh, the, the VR showrooms that we are uh, offering as well. Hey, is, this, um, is this virtual e-commerce or we're not up to that yet? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so let's let's uh, let's move into virtual e-commerce powered by retail VR. Right, and so um, the uh, the idea with virtual e-commerce, I think, is to uh, uh, being able to uh, create immersive worlds, uh, immersive shopping experience. Um, whether they are related to existing stores or whether they are related to um, uh, the usage of the product. Hey, um, Adrian, uh, for, forgive me for interrupting, but your screen's been frozen. And uh, actually, now it's moving. I was going to suggest that you maybe sign off and sign back in, but I, I think we're good now. So okay. I know you have so many things open on your computer that it, it's, it's probably uh, affected us a little bit. So uh, uh, forgive me, we're back to virtual e-commerce powered by retail VR. Thank you very much, Dan. Um, so like I said, uh, the, the idea with uh, virtual e-commerce is actually to recreate uh, immersive stores uh, in VR um, to uh, um, uh, either rec recreate the store or uh, um, something that relates to the product in which you can the product into um, uh, the environment that it's going to be used for. Um, so maybe I can share with you uh, this uh, Nespresso showroom that we've done uh, for Nespresso. Uh, maybe I can share the screen with you. Yes, please. So same thing, you get to launch, uh, launch uh, uh, it's an URL and, and then you, you can launch uh, and get connected to the, to the server. Um, uh, it's still struggling to connect. And uh, I, I just wonder if it might make sense to, to sign off and sign back in uh, and okay. see that clear, clear stuff up. Uh, well, it just came up. Okay. Um, so tell so, me if it's not here. Yeah, the, the audio problem. Why don't, why don't you sign off, sign back in, and we'll, we'll just pick it up. Okay, I'm signing up. Yep, I'll stay here. Okay. All right, so uh, Adrian will be back. Uh, Retail VR, the website is www.retail-vr.com. Uh, he's showing these super exciting uh, integrations of Matterport meets virtual reality meets augmented reality. It's all possible because their platform, the, the retail VR platform, enables way cool stuff uh, uh, using the retail VR uh, platform, their tools, their tool set. Uh, I think we started to get a, a little bit of the demo on that that first of five that we're, we were looking at the virtual uh, showroom. That was pretty cool. Uh, now uh, Adrian is going to show us the uh, uh, virtual e-commerce. He alluded to this a little bit during the virtual showroom demo. Uh, that was that was pretty cool. Uh, so this this is the idea of being able to take a space and virtually stage it with three dimensional objects. And I think at that point, Adrian can pick it up. So we're, we're back. Yes, yeah, sorry for this. Um, yeah, well, I wanted to um, uh, tell you more about uh, the virtual e-commerce or, or v-commerce, v however you call it. Uh, which I think is uh, is really uh, uh, a one step uh, towards the uh, the metaverse. Um, so I can share with you this uh, experience. Oh, uh, I might have to. Oh, good. Okay, you still have sharing privileges. Okay, great. So there. Okay, something I need to mention probably. Um, why has Nespresso decided to recreate uh, a Nespresso store? The reason is quite simple: is that um, for their client, the store is very important and they have uh, digital clients, uh, clients that are buying mostly online that still are going to the store um, to 
taste, uh, the latest coffee and so on. So we have really worked on redesigning the store uh, as it would be. And you see, you have some tricks here, uh, how to uh, actually uh, uh, show, show the, uh, the, the caps. Uh, you can select the products and then you have the product description. So it's the same mechanism as we've seen before. Uh, uh, you probably don't have the same carousels, but you have the same product sheet, same information, and you can put the products into the shopping basket. And as we were uh, saying before, we have also, um, how to say, uh, the human uh, uh is important and the, the, the sellers for Nespresso are actually called the coffee con sellers. So uh, we can also have uh, an interaction with uh, these coffee con sellers and they can come and help you, assist you whilst you are shopping online. Um, and the beauty is that, of course, you can change, for instance, the colors, uh, you can uh, play with the, the objects uh, and, and you have uh, also some uh, uh, information about uh, Oops, sorry. Now, There's this, a light. this space looks totally virtually staged. Did it begin with a Matterport space? Yes. In the first stage, what we do um, is that we use Matter Matterport to create the digital twin, uh, which helps us to actually get all the measures, uh, all the, uh, uh, the, the, the textures, uh, and all the pictures, of course. So we, we always uh, start with scanning uh, the, the, a, a, a real store uh, with Matterport. And from there, we are going to, uh, uh, our graphic designers are going to uh, basically uh, uh, redesign the, the, the store and, 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 and work it out uh, the way we, we want it to be. So it's, uh, it's a process that um, is handled with, the, with the, 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 our clients. Uh, they actually decide on uh, uh, how they want to have the store set up. We also are thinking about the uh, customer journey. Uh, it shouldn't be uh, too long. It shouldn't be, uh, you know, you want to go straight to the point. So this is why we, uh, there's a mixture between uh, uh, real merchandising and virtual mer merchandising, I would say. So I wanted to, sh to show this uh, experience uh, maybe to stress that uh, this is really, in my opinion, uh, going to be um, the, the new way of, uh, of, uh, of uh, retail, uh, for, for retailers to uh, address their, their clients. Um, if, uh, and also I forgot to mention that uh, you can have the same thing, uh, which is to uh, actually uh, uh, put those into the basket, uh, you can uh, select the products and, and actually buy it. And then same thing, uh, we are um, uh, twinned with uh, uh, Shopify and PrestaShop. So you can actually pour your uh, shopping basket into a shopping environment. Cool. All right. Uh, did you want to stay on the category of virtual e-commerce or are you ready to move on to retail staging? Yeah. I think we can move on to uh, to to retail staging. Okay. Um, so, uh, retail staging. Uh, to give you a bit of uh, of background, um, the retail staging uh, actually um, is using the converter to the three D. Um, the idea there is to simulate uh, customer journeys. Um, so when you are a brand and you want to uh, showcase uh, what the assortment uh, or what uh, a new product uh, will look like uh, into a store, um, or if you want to place uh, uh, POS equipment, uh, so point of sales, um, uh, merchandising uh, boxes, uh, these sort of, uh, uh, of uh, promotional equipments, into the store, um, you can use uh, retail staging. So then again, maybe I share with you the, the, the screen. Um, so 
this is uh, virtual and then I'll, uh, I'll show you in the first place the virtual one and then I'll show you once again how we use Matterport, uh, uh, the digital twins of stores and how we use it to, to, to simulate the, the same thing. So there I'm in a virtual store. Um, eventually I get this uh, eagle view where I can uh, uh, you see, uh, uh, see where I'm, I'm currently uh, uh, heading in the store. And for instance, if I want to uh, uh, place, uh, let's say, uh, uh, some uh, fixtures there, then I can do this, remove the shelves. And then from the platform, I'm connected to the platform. So from there, I'm going to select uh, different uh, uh, shelves that I would like to insert. So I'm going to insert this uh, massive shelf here. And there, you see, it's very uh, simple. It's just a, a basic uh, uh, drag and drop system. And there I can position uh, the, the, the shelf into the store. Uh, and this is done very easily. And all the products you see there uh, are actually recreated from our 2D to 3D converter. So pause there for a second. We'll, we'll, we'll keep this image in our mind. Uh, I, I, I could imagine this could almost be obvious that if, if you're a retail merchandiser, you're a grocery store person, you look at that and you go, wow, I can see all the benefits. Let's, let's step aside and say, hey, I'm a Matterport service provider. Yep. Why does that matter? What what What's the benefit? Who Who's the audience for doing that? How do they use it? What's the advantage? Uh, what, what are the benefits of what we just saw for whom? Right. Um, basically, uh, if you address the retail industry, um, your clients uh, may want to have digital twins uh, in which they would like to see uh, the assortment to appear. Uh, so, the idea, for instance, currently we are um, uh, digital, digitalizing um, our furniture stores. We are digitalizing uh, food stores uh, using Matterport. And uh, it's, uh, it's the best way to simulate the customer journey and to simulate the, the new assortment that your client may want to, uh, uh, to put into the store. So when you are, if you are a Matterport user, you can go to uh, any store, uh, uh, any uh, uh, brand owner um, uh, that is selling uh, FMCG goods or that is selling even clothes because we are now uh, working for uh, the, the clothing industry. And the idea is for them to be able to um, simulate the journey for, let's say that you want to remove, um, I don't know, the coffee uh, beans, and, and, and remove the, the, the coffee section with uh, sweets, for instance. Uh, it, how, how are you going to simulate this? Either you do it physically, which means that you're, you'd have to remove all the elements one by one and replace with uh, uh, sweets, or you can simulate this using the, the 3D. Uh, it's the same thing when, when you speak about uh, product, uh, you know, placing POS equipment or uh, merchandising equipment. Uh, maybe I can share with you again uh, uh, the, the let, screen. Before yeah. you do, let, let me see yeah. if I can ask the question. I'm, I think about it as a life cycle of yeah. from the beginning to the end. I, I'm thinking, okay, the, the store, let's say those were all for, I, I'm in Atlanta, easier for me to think about Coca-Cola. They got 20 million different kinds of uh, products that they offer. So they might go to a retail store that's got 200 locations and say, hey, right. for this aisle, for this half of aisle, this is the way we think you should merchandise. You should have Coke, Diet Coke, Zero Coke, Sprite, uh, uh, every different iteration, how, how many bottles, how many cans, height, shelf, depth, <clears throat> and, and essentially... Yep. <clears throat> Again, I'm not in the retail space, but I can imagine there's a conversation that says, and we'll pay you X number of dollars if you give us this space 
And this is the way we're going to merchandise it. So that's kind of phase one. And I'm guessing there's a, probably an old school way that that has previously been done. Either yeah. you physically took a client to a make-believe retail store and said, this is the way it looks. And then somebody yeah. says, well, we don't really like that. And they start moving the different bottles and cans around. And maybe this is like three or five different trips to some place to kind of settle on what that final thing looks like. <clears throat> you're almost showing me it can be done in real time in a meeting. Yeah, Save. this is this. You're you're completely right. Then uh, this is I, I can give you an example. Uh, we are working with uh, a world leader for uh, dairy products called Lactalis. Uh, you have their uh, uh, president Camembert probably in, uh, in in the US if if you eat cheese, um, and they are. Um, We've digitalized their uh, their showroom, uh, uh, and usually they get they gather people to their head offices, and uh, so uh, they have like five ten persons coming, and then they discuss about the assortment. They discuss about the signage that they are going to put into the store. They discuss about all these uh, uh, details on on how the merchandising is working. During COVID, same thing. This is why I've mentioned earlier that COVID has been a great accelerator for us. Uh, during COVID, they could not get the people in their physical store, in their physical showroom. So what did they do? They, we've actually, uh, thanks to, to, to the converter, thanks to the fact that we are also uh, twinned with uh, uh, merchandising solutions such as Blue Yonder, uh, uh, Relax, and so on. Um, we create on the fly uh, planograms that are then uh, showcased into these virtual store or these uh, Matterport uh, uh, stores. And then they can share these with their clients. And we've well, measured because we have phase two. So bear with me, but I, I think yeah. first is like, okay, instead of doing these five meetings, which we now couldn't even do with COVID, yeah. <clears throat> we can have this... Uh, <clears throat> excuse me, this, this virtual meeting, yeah, digital exactly. stage, the, the, the store says, okay, I like it. And, yeah. and maybe in a previous world, somebody would take a picture, a planogram, yeah. a flat yeah. two-dimensional object and send that out to 200 stores and say, okay, this is the way this store needs to look. I think what I'm hearing in phase two once everybody has agreed to this, this the, 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 the space, how yeah. it's going to be productized, yeah. then yeah. the next thing is, okay, now we got to get 200 stores to look exactly like this. But in, yeah. perhaps instead of actually sending out a 2D photo, is you can now send a Matterport tour that's been virtually staged, powered by uh, retail VR, so that the, the store team, the, the stockers, I guess, if that's the word, not stockers, yeah. stockers, that the stockers can actually look at it and see that it looks exactly like the three-dimensional model. Yeah, exactly. That's it. And, and it's also... And I'm, I'm sorry, is there anything on that phase two? So I'm going to call that a, a virtual, a 3D planogram. Yeah, yeah. It's actually uh, setting a 3D planograms and 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 setting it into the store. You're you're right. And I'm also going to guess that you all have because you talked in in your in early on you talked about the importance of APIs and I think you mentioned but you actually have APIs to the planogram kinds of companies so that you can just presumably if you if your work if if your team's used to working in the planogram platform. Uh, there's probably a format and then you can take the exactly. export and import it into the uh, retail VR platform using is that using an API. It's actually, uh, uh, yeah, for some of the, uh, of these companies, we are working on APIs and, uh, but otherwise you, as you mentioned, there's a standard uh, uh, which was set by the, uh, it's actually a U.S. company, a worldwide leader in these technologies called Blue Yonder, former JDA. And, and they actually set a, a standard and we are, most of the planograms, uh, merchandising solutions are using this standard. So we can convert uh, like, we, like you've seen uh, at the beginning of, of, uh, 
our conversation, we import the product, uh, you know, to the images into the platform, then create in 3D. It's exactly the same thing. You are going to import these files, and they are going to uh, to create these uh, 3D planograms, like you uh, I just showed you before. So, it's so, so, so this is really cool. So again, if I'm a Matterport service provider, I'm scratching my head and I go, okay, I got these retail stores. I got, I have made in, in Atlanta, I got all these big brands that are, that are headquartered here. Yep. And they say, no, we, you know, we got a team of people that work in planograms. They, they you know, I, I can't change their workflow. Yeah. Perfectly fine. We take the export from their planogram platform i think elastic pitch lay new black this yeah. uh, if i mentioned them correctly and just in phase one is just import them into the platform eventually presumably there'll be an api it'll make it even easier and so now this kind of phase two of the life cycle of a retail experience uh is a matterport 3d tour planogram that gets yeah. distributed to the 200 plus stores and so they can nail it in terms of what it looks like now i'm yeah. going to pause there because i think now that takes us back to the first demo that you did of the virtual showroom because you now actually have created a retail store that could be online so the store you've already you've already done the Matterport tour. You've changed some things to highlight your products. You could conceivably then turn that into a, a not that that's where you were going, but it, it sounds like it conceivably yeah. you could have a hybrid of we have the the store as it exists today, but we have our products in that are merchandised in this tour and maybe the hot buttons only, uh, you know, work on the Coca-Cola products of what you can buy as, as an example. Yeah, 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 definitely. This is, this could be the, 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 the next stage or the phase three, which is, uh, and, 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 and the circle is completed, uh, which definitely could be to, uh, uh, you know, simulate the, the, the store. Uh, and actually make a connection with uh, with the with the Shopify, for instance. Yeah, you know, I, and I, I'm guessing, Adrian, that actually kind of you know leads nicely into the oh, and you know, and before I go on, I I think the point of everything you've just said uh, and COVID kind of amplified it was yeah. this whole experience saves a ton of time. It saves yeah. a ton of money, particularly companies that are used to traveling people uh, across the country, uh, around the globe, yeah. uh, it collapses time. So I, I imagine, you know, e even with the clients that you've had so far, uh, that, that uh, retail VR has been able to point uh, out to say, hey, we we save X number of dollars, we save X amount of time. And I, I imagine this is ancillary benefit that of reducing carbon, uh, just simply because you're 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 doing less. Yeah, De definitely. I mean, uh, for instance, uh, uh, when you're going digital, uh, I've, I've mentioned this uh, Lactalis, for instance, this uh, dairy company. Um, they could uh, share their um, showroom uh, with. Usually, uh, like I mentioned, they share it with about 10, 15 people of, of, from one company. Uh, they are dealing with about seven of the main distributors in France. This time, they could share it with over 350 persons. So they, there were actually 350 uh, persons involved into uh, uh, this uh, uh, merchandising uh, campaigns uh, that could uh, look at the store, uh, at the digital store, and 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 their uh, decision has been uh, uh, accelerated uh, by the fact that they uh, could visualize the way it would look, and also you can imagine that you don't you don't have these people to uh, to travel around uh, to to their head office, so you are saving also on CO two emissions. Not to say uh, when you're traveling from overseas, like I've mentioned before, uh, for the uh, um, the the fashion week, of course this 
really we've estimated that uh, for uh, one brand uh, uh, when gathering all their clients uh, uh, for the for the fashion week we've estimated that it's 1200 tons of co2 emissions that we have uh, saved so you are saving on time uh time uh of traveling of course of co2 emissions but also time for uh, setting those uh, stores because once you are uh, like you said uh, uh, if, if it's physical then you grab your client take them to the store and they're going to change the layout or, or to the showroom but if you do this virtually it, you can do the same or you can uh interact with the client like we are doing now uh in in, in, in virtual rea uh, in the virtual environment and and you can make proposal one proposal two proposal three uh decline all the proposition that you wish uh, because it's all digitalized and it's all related to a, a planogramming system or it's all uh, completely uh, uh, interacted uh, with uh, api so this is uh, you are saving really money. Saving, I think that, that yeah, I saving think money and time. Is, you know, you're, you're, you're talking about such a large dollars that when somebody starts talking about, well, how much is all this stuff in terms of doing this Matterport shoots and digitally mm -hmm. staging? And, and I, I imagine all that is actually a fraction of of the way old school doing stuff has been. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and now if they wanna do old school, they can continue to do it. The Fashion Week in Milan decides that they still wanna have in person, they're gonna do that. But for all those other buyers that couldn't afford the time, the money to travel, they can still have just as awesome a, a, a shopping experience, uh, even with the personal uh, shopping person interacting with them in the in the virtual experience. Um, shopper studies. Oh, wanna... so shopper studies. I'll, I'll be uh, 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 short about this one. Uh, basically, the idea is the same idea with shopper studies. When you when you launch a new product, um, you want your client to test the product. So how do you do? You usually use uh, uh, physical. Uh, showrooms, it's very unlikely that you would have someone to uh, uh, a real store basically to, to run shopper studies. So usually you use a, uh, a space where you're going to recreate uh, uh, an assortment. So you have to buy all the products first. Uh, it takes time. Uh, eventually, uh, sometimes people use uh, massive billboards uh, on which they print the assortment. And then you have to uh, get a consumer to uh, actually, uh, shoppers to actually uh, uh, bring to that place and see how they behave. So we work with shopper institutes and, and these guys are, uh, they have their panels of, of shoppers. And what's also very interesting is that usually it's very localized. So people don't buy the same way when they are in California or when they are on the East Coast. Uh, the weathers are different, the mentalities are different. So um, the best is when you run a shopper study online because then you can have panels from California, panels from New York, panels from uh, wherever, uh, even from overseas. And this is what we provide is this uh, idea of being able to uh, actually uh, uh, run a shopper study online if possible or eventually uh, uh, in front of a, a computer or you can use also the headset um, and and then you're going to study or an, our partners are going to study uh, the way the shoppers are behaving so there you really save a lot of time and of course a lot of money uh, because like I said you don't have to physically buy the products you all the brands that we work with or all the uh the supermarket chains they they have uh pictures of their product so we use 2d to 3d converter we we create those uh 3d planograms and then uh we expose the clients uh to these uh shopping experience i can actually share with you a, a shopping experience yeah, that would be great. I, I also imagine that 
in in this testing process, if you quickly identify there's a problem, rather than continuing with that problem, you can make the change. So you can iterate almost in real time to, to get to the solution faster uh, for less money. Definitely. Um, it's, uh, we've, we've found out that uh, uh, it happens uh, already that they start um, they start a shopper study and then after 10 15 shoppers they realize that there's something wrong uh, so then they get back to us and and also with the agency uh, they rework and we rework the planograms and then we re-push it uh, so you can uh, yeah you can also the beauty is that you can have uh, uh, it's I would say it's almost unlimited you can run a shopper study on on a complete store environment which is usually not done but you could imagine to have so so we we work with uh, Nestle uh, waters for instance we were we work with Nestle and uh, for one of their division uh, waters they we could run the study uh, on six different aisles which is uh it's huge usually you run the study on on few elements, eventually one aisle, but six different aisles. Uh, it's really, uh, it, yeah, definitely uh, it enlarged the way you are going to 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 run your your shopper study. You wanted to show us something. Yes, sorry, I'm going to share that with you. So while Adrian's getting set up, the website is uh, retail VR with a hyphen retail hyphen vr.com retail hyphen vr.com and your screen's just coming up right like, so there i think you can recognize the environment uh, and and so since you're in atlanta um so there the idea, and it's it's working even better when when you're in the, the headset. Uh, so the idea is for the consumer to be able to. You, usually, you give them a mission, and you say, okay, uh, or you ask them, how do you, uh, what do you usually buy in this? Uh, so the client would uh, buy the way they they prefer. So we make different version, um, and if they have a mission, maybe you're going to tell them, uh, okay. Uh, can you grab the uh, cherry coke, for instance, or maybe it's somewhere there? So you are going to identify how long they spend. Uh, everything is recorded, and you also have um, uh, eye tracking uh, possibilities, so that you see where where the people are are uh, focusing, and then they can put the product uh, into their basket, uh, and then they can uh, change. You see, a, a, and 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 no, I don't want this one, so I put it back. And they can actually uh, uh, run into the store and, and manipulate the product and buy the product and put it in the, into the basket. And by doing so, we identify how the consumer are behaving in front of the, uh, in front of the, the assortment. So these um, shopper studies are, are run with uh, shopper institutes. Um, and they're the one to then uh, analyze and 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 basically uh, uh, work on the on the on the study. And what we do provide as well is the possibility to run uh, A/B testing. So let's uh, let's say that you want to uh, launch a product and you're not so sure about the packaging. Um, you can A/B test. Uh, within your company or with your uh, with your panel of, of shoppers, and we can work a workflow like this, like you've seen, uh, uh, very easily uh, using uh, our platform to actually uh, create these uh, uh, these A/B tests. So the question would be: uh, uh, Have you spotted that bottle? Yes or no? Uh, and then you show the bottle. Would you? rather have a bottle uh, in red color or blue color and then you're going to figure out a, a decision tree uh, and this is very easy to to work on uh, it actually takes uh, 
uh, minutes, I would say, to work on such a tree. So the idea is to be able to run um, for uh, uh, a limited cost, as many uh, A-B testing as you can to make sure that your clients uh, or that you, your decision making is the correct one. Awesome. Before we move on to the, to the last category that we were going to discuss today, the in-store activation, um, talk to me a little bit about metrics uh, that the retail VR platform provides for the shopper studies in particular, but also statistics in general for all the different experiences we're looking at. Right. So, um for the shopper studies, I would say uh, the, the, all the metrics are usually handled by the shopper agencies, but we uh, comfort them uh, with uh, uh, like the number of products and the, 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 the references uh, that have been actually handled by the client, uh, how long they spent into the store, um, uh, we can, uh, like I said, we also have eye tracking for this. And as for the showroom, uh, we have uh, we can uh, we have the same uh, information. So, how many clients have visited the showroom? How long they spend? Um, what type what type of product they've uh, selected? Uh, and we can also plug uh, the eye tracking. Uh, uh, in, uh, information system in case you want to really deep dive into the consumer uh, behavior. And, and is, do you keep track of time? We, we were looking at the live guided tour. Are there are there metrics regarding, do, do you relate back, uh, oh, uh, Sally was the live guided tour for those three uh, purses that you were showing us earlier. Uh, ah, yes. uh, there was sales that were made. So, and we know that Sally, uh, sales attributed to Sally was X, sales attributed to Dan was one half X. Maybe we need to, to say, you know, Sally's really our star at doing live guided tours with, is there something like that in terms of metrics? Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, I mean, uh, definitely we, uh, when you, when there's a, a, a personal shopper uh, that comes to the store, we know who was there, how long they were there, uh, and eventually we can record the whole process uh, in case you want to analyze this. Um, and since we use the basket, uh, because we, we we pour the basket into the, uh, I, I use this imaging of uh, you know pouring the basket into the, the Shopify, for instance, or whatever uh, CRM comes behind, then of course we can compare uh, the, the, the total sales of one salesperson uh, versus the uh, uh, sales uh, of, of another person. Awesome. Uh, In-store activation. Right. Um, so let me try to uh, uh, explain you how in-store activation works. Uh, maybe you can, uh, I'm, I'm, I'll, I will try to run this demo. Uh, okay. uh, so so stay with us. This is a little bit extra like effort to get this piece working, doing WGAN TV live at five with all our technology, trying to overlay retail VR meets augmented reality meets Matterport um, meets the whatever else. It's, it's, there's a lot going on and what we're going to try and do here that Adrian's going to try and do. So I'm just waiting for him to do, do his next step. I don't. Uh, do, do you see, do you see my iPhone coming or not? No, no, okay. no. Okay. I'm stalling for time while that's happening. Okay, okay. So I guess it's not going to work this time. Okay. Um, we may get to do it once per session. Do you want to just try one more time on your phone? Yeah, let me try again. Okay. Uh, the idea is to actually use augmented reality uh, to connect uh, the salesperson uh, and Uh, I'm going to yeah. let Adrian focus on the phone and to, yeah. just to tell you, you're watching WGAN TV live at five. Uh, uh, Adrian, you think it's going to work or no? No, it's, it's asking me, it's actually uh, asking me for a secret code password that uh, I think we, we didn't get this uh, no. earlier okay. on. So okay. never mind. 
So you have a, a video prepared. You're going to roll yes. some video for us to, to, to see. Yes. Um, in fact, while Adrian's setting up to, to play this video, I, I would say if, if, if uh, what, he, what you're about to see is of interest, call Adrian or go, go to retail-vr.com. There's an opportunity to set up a meeting with Adrian, get him to demo it for you. Uh, uh, it's, it's way cool. It's really way, it's way cool. But we'll watch a video of it. Yes. And also, uh, I think it's important for, for those who are uh, Matterport user, we are offering, uh, uh, there, there's a trial. So basically, if you have a, a link uh, of, of your Matterport uh, digital twin, uh, you can bring the link uh, onto our uh, website uh, under the section of showrooms uh, and under the subsection of uh, Matterport. And, and there you have a, a 15 days trial uh, if you want to, to, to use the, 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 our, our solution, basically. So feel and free to... You're specifically to... talking about the augmented reality solution meets Matterport. So, um, no, I'm specifically talking about the, the, what we've discussed in the first place, which was the... Uh, the, the uh, uh, the showroom uh, using Matterport, the one that can be connected to uh, to the uh, the Shopify, for instance, or if okay. you want to awesome. run a visit or something like this. Okay, awesome. Let's see your video. Yeah, um, I'm just trying to uh, get this video running. Sorry, uh, there it is. So. Share screen. I'm not sharing the screen, am I? Nope, share screen. No. Okay, sorry for this. Oh, there it goes. So you see the screen now? Almost, now I do. Okay, all right, so let me put it back. So um, you've seen that we are using uh, augmented uh, reality. The, the idea is to uh, push the uh, modelized uh, POS equipment uh, into the store so that when you are a salesperson, um, you've actually discussed with the, the store on, on the assortment that you wish to, to put. But then you have the merchandisers or the salesperson that are on the field. And these guys, quite often, they have to use catalogs, paper catalogs, or they have to use PowerPoint presentation. And it's very difficult for them to uh, showcase what uh, the insertion of a signage of a promotional item would be. So we use augmented reality uh, for uh, the salesperson to push those catalogs into the into the into the the store basically. Yeah. Um, so this is this is actually way cool. If the fact that you can be on site, uh, you've taken the two D. Uh, products, turn them into 3D, turn the 3D products into a whole uh, standy, whatever it's called in the retail space. And now the ability to actually place it to show a prospect to say, this is what it would look like here in your right. store. So way right. cool. Um, uh, I think at this point, what, what I'd like to do is just ask you some questions before we wind down. Um, Who's the sweet, what kind of categories are the sweet spot for retail VR? Right. So we have, uh, well, if you are a Matterport user, definitely you want to aim at uh, any of your clients that have a store. Uh, this is, I guess, very obvious that you want to uh, uh, turn their store into a, an immersive shopping experience. Uh, thanks to the fact that we are twin with Shopify, Magento, PrestaShop. Um, now, for those uh, persons that are related to uh, brand owners, I call them, or industrials, uh, or, or uh, you want to aim to the uh, uh, category managers, the marketing uh, managers, uh, the merchandiser, uh, the, these persons that are suffering uh, with, uh, you know, showing uh, uh, and, and viewing uh, how the assortment could be uh, or uh, how difficult it is to launch a product uh, when, when 
you can use 3D, you, you see that it makes a difference. So these are the person you, you want to target. So it, it, it sounds like, uh, and thank you for that, because I was actually thinking of something slightly different, which, which is oh, uh, retail. Retail includes clothing. It includes product, uh, uh, consumer package goods. Uh, yeah. It might be food, uh, home care, furniture. I, I'm, I, I'm looking at you know what the demo that you've taken us through today and say, if you have any physical retail store, you're probably a good candidate for retail yeah. VR. Uh, is there a sweet spot in terms of size? Do you, do you work with one individual store or is it, I need to be 10 stores? I need to be 200 stores? No, we can, we can start with, you know, one uh, individuals. Uh, I would say that currently we are working with, uh, yeah, uh, 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 sometimes multinational. I've mentioned uh, Nestle and so on, but, but we are also, I mean, we have uh, clients that are um, uh, that have uh, single stores uh, with a very uh, tiny uh, uh, assortment, uh, uh, but very high va value uh, uh, product. So these also uh, are our clients. So you really want to aim uh, these clients so so that they can uh, have, um, you know, sometimes. Uh, clothing, for instance, uh, before I worked with the clothing industry, I, I figure out when I go into the store that merchandising is done, you know, you have male on one side, female on the other, and the kids at the back. No, it's it's the, the assortment of clothing. Uh, there's a lot of merchandising uh, reflection behind that. So, and it's, all, it's very important to reflect uh, how the merchandising is done into the store because this is what uh, is going to attract the uh, the consumer and and create generate these uh, uh, impulse buying. So and so we work with uh, the clothing industry. We have a furniture reseller. Uh, we have uh, uh, food and beverage. We work with uh, supermarket chains. We work with uh, uh, different. Uh, I mean, basically. Anyone with a into retail, whether it's e-commerce or or whether it's brick and mortar, uh, can come to the platform and 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 get the, our solution working. So if I'm if if I'm one retail store in one location, uh, yeah. I shouldn't be concerned that this is going to cost a bazillion dollars or bazillion euros. I should I should think. Oh, this is a totally affordable solution. It's perfectly fine to be one store. We yeah. retail VR would be perfectly fine if it's the uh, the head of the retail store that has a hundred or two hundred or five hundred or a thousand. But you're happy to have a conversation from one store to many stores. And I think you're probably perfectly fine too if a Matterport service provider who does retail stores wants to reach out to you to have a conversation to say, hey, I, I'm, I've shot all these retail stores. Their products are constantly changing. I'm maybe doing a refresh once a quarter for them. But watching today's uh, WGAN TV show kind of inspires me that I think there's an opportunity for me to add a huge amount of additional value to my clients. Mm -hmm. I just want to have that conversation with you so I kind of understand how this works, what you need, who pays what, you know, am, am, am I the Matterport service provider going to pay retail VR? Am I really handing retail VR off to my client? And it's a three-way conversation. So you're right. open to those kinds of discussions, right. whether yeah. it's a retailer, a Matterport service provider, uh, or a major chain. Yeah, right. You're completely right uh, that the... Uh... If you're a Matterport uh, uh, camera owner, you can uh, use uh, our platform to resell uh, to your client uh, a, a store, for, uh, a virtual store, for instance. Um, if you are a brand, uh, of course, you may want to use these uh, merchandising solutions uh, if you want to create A-B testings internally or or use the retail staging and so on. So um, 
And, I'm and, actually and, hearing it could be any. So if I'm a, a Matterport service provider and I do re, uh, furniture stores, I might say, no, I, I want the subscription to retail VR in behalf of my client. I'm just going to provide this value sure. because my client loves the fact that I just do it all for them. Uh, yeah, yes. And I have clients that say, or photographers that might say, no, this is a little bit overwhelming to me. I can see the value, but I think I'd rather do the introduction to retail VR, but I want to keep shooting spaces for them. Uh, and they'll be happy to have me keep shooting right. the spaces. You don't really care about that. You're happy mm -hmm. to have, have the content shot anywhere, presumably. Yeah. 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 So, um, we, we, we actually are looking for a, a, a value added reseller at, at some point. Uh, it's eventually for the US, I mean, specifically for the US, definitely. Uh, so we have these uh, agreement where actually you can be a, a Matterport service provider and uh, just want to use our platform and resell it to your client or just be, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, working on, on commission. If you bring a client, of course, we can, we can uh, work uh, this way. Uh, has a, a used Matterport service provider has a reseller. Okay, awesome. So if you're watching today's show, you're in the so uh, your your headquarters for retail VR is actually in Nantes, France, on the the west yes. on the west coast. Yes. And uh, you're if I happen to be a value added reseller of some sort in the United States, and I look at this show and go, oh my gosh, this is just amazing. I want to be a value added reseller for retail VR, go to retail-vr.com and book an appointment with uh, Adrian and, and have that yes. conversation. Um, yes. You know, this one thing I wanted to come back to, because at some point early in the show, you, you mentioned uh, metaverse. Did you have some thoughts on this topic? Yes, definitely. Uh, metaverse is, uh, is also really going to change the, the way retailers are going to do business for the future. And I think everybody's concerned about this and, and the US is, uh, is booming on this uh, metaverse uh, currently. Um, and we are really are, uh, I would say the, everything's ready uh, for, our, for us to bring our clients to the, the, the metaverse uh, retail uh, new world, I would say. Uh, like you've seen, we can do uh, 2D to 3D conversion. We can do uh, these immersive shopping experience. Uh, we can eventually recreate a complete uh, metaverse uh, uh, for, for the brands. Um, uh, same thing with uh, NFTs, if, if uh, people want to uh, consider uh, making drops, uh, we can help them. So I would say that at some point we are ready to to ready for metaverse, may, ready for the meta retail. <laughs> Maybe that's the way we are going to call it in the future. Uh, awesome. Is there is there any question that I haven't asked you? A topic that we haven't discussed that uh, that, that we should cover? Uh, I don't think so. Not. Anything that is uh, coming to my mind? Um, Adrian, uh, I, I think of retail VR as a kind of this mashup of Matterport, virtual reality, augmented reality, uh, kind of powered by this amazing platform that re retail VR has put together, particularly that tool that, that enables 2D to be converted to 3D, create 3D objects, be able to put it in Matterport. Um, it, it got a lot of exciting stuff. I'm obviously excited. I called you. I said I wanted you to be on the show. Um, is there a different way that you describe retail VR? Is there a, a sentence or two to like? Yeah, how, how do I? The, how does someone go communicate this to someone else? I, I would say that uh, we ease the 3D uh, uh, usage for the retailers. This is really the idea: is to offer uh, this platform that is very very simple to use. Um, for our clients to be able to use this 3D. That is, 3D is already completely uh, used in the industry and has been for many years. And what we offer with this uh, SaaS platform is really uh, the, the simple way uh, to access to 3D and, and really uh, uh, feel the, the, the value chain 
within the company from sales to uh, marketing, merchandising. Uh, and this is really what we are aiming at. I, awesome. I hope it summarizes. Awesome. Adrian, thanks for uh, being my guest on the show today. Uh, thank you very much, Dan. I uh, really appreciate and I, I, I hope uh, your audience appreciates as well. Thank you for inviting me. It's a pleasure to be here discussing with you tonight. We've been visiting with Adrian Zanelli. Adrian is one of the co-founders of Retail VR. Uh, Adrian heads up international business development. You can make an appointment with Adrian at www.retail-vr.com. You can also see many of the demos that he's showed during today's show, either a video or a live tour to actually uh, check out at retail-vr.com. Uh, in the We Get Around Network forum, it's A-D-R-I-E-N as a member of the We Get Around Network forum, wganforum.com. For Adrian in France at sometime after midnight, thank you for hanging in there. I'm Dan Snakerod in Atlanta, uh, the founder of the We Get Around Network Forum, and you've been watching WGAN-TV 